Okay, okay, so can you tell me what what's the proper pronunciation for or what's the abbreviation for that? Because that is, you know, that confused me when she asked the question. Yeah, it, it happened like that because, when, first of all, when you um, write in Hebrew, a lot of people don't realize, first you got to understand there's no such thing as present tense in Hebrew. So, and a lot of names in most languages are based on present tense. If I love someone's name by an event when they're born. Okay? With no present tense, sometimes a word will sound like a big old in the call of the But the word will have the same sound for whole different meaning. When you get into the uh, scriptures of the Most High, you have a combination of Italian, Obaric, uh, Phoenician, uh, Iri or Hebrew, Syriac, uh, Aramaic, all of these different dialects, uh, which is shortened by the word tongue in the, in the scripture. Because in, uh, in America, mainly people use the word language. And it's a only deviation from language is the word dialect. And the Bible tends to use the word tongue to describe dialects. And inside any one language, you can have 10 to 15 dialects, depending on the province a person lives in and the influence of foreigners who would migrate to that specific area to buy or sell. Meaning that people came from Syria, Syria over to Galilee, then the Galileans would automatically start picking up Syrian dialects because they have to buy and trade. When the scriptures were being revealed, remember the scripture was coming down as inspiration, or awakening as they call it, and then that in the hands of human beings to transport into scriptures or script or scribes to write down or record. And as that would happen, you find that in Surya they have a word noon, which is the Arabic word for noon, and then in Hebrew they have a word for noon, and then the Akkadians from the Sumerian dialects of Ugaric have a word for noon, and they all end up in the Bible because the Bible is traveling through history and different people at different places are being mentioned as if it's all in the same neighborhood. And this is where people become confused. Most everything you read in the New Testament, the, the New Testament Bible has been intentionally transposed from the language that Jesus spoke, which was Galilean, not Hebrew, like most people say, is no such language as Hebrew in Greek, as they say. He spoke Galilean, and that was transposed out of Galilean into several different dialects of the Greek language. Then from the Greek language over into Latin. Then into German, by Tinsdale, then back down into English. Well, as you read in the Bible, especially the New Testament, it's very difficult Etymologically speaking, to follow word by word and get a true uh, meaning of what God was saying. In the Old Testament, you have the same problem happening. Genesis, that in Genesis, really comes after the Jeremiah. And this is what the rabbinical priests have discovered since they opened the Dead Sea Scrolls and found the whole tablets of Jeremiah. That the story in creation. Of Jeremiah chapter 4 predates the story in the creation of what we're calling by Rashid or Genesis. And they realize that in Jeremiah chapter 4, I'm, sorry, I'm going up to this language of the word. Jeremiah chapter 4, the deity or deity that's speaking is referred to in, as, as, under four code letters YHWH. But the uh, that he is speaking in Genesis is under the word Elohim, in a sense a form, not in a sense, in fact a form. And the one in Isaiah 4, we started 22, straight on out of 26, you'll find German. this deity with the four initial letters, why it speaks in the first person singular. I beheld the earth and it trembled. And void in darkness, the founding deep. And then as it goes down to about, to about the 26th verse, this I, first person, singular deity says, 
and the, and the whole land fell or tumbled down at the presence of the YHWH. At the presence of it. While in Genesis, we get a story of the Elohim creating, but recreating because it says re or in Hebrew, Barashit. Barra Elohim, Barashit. Barra means to, uh, the, the word Rashid, Barashit in Hebrew. Doesn't really mean beginning. The word Rashish is from the word Rasha, which means at the head, at the at the start of something again. You follow? And of course, the translators will, will, will leave you that because it, it becomes confusion to them, and they haven't taken the time in the country to impart the language of the book that they say they believe in on the people, but rather translation. So again, you get caught by the meaning of names. You see. So the word again, nun, can come out to have any of <laughs> 50 different meanings in the same book. Because more than 50 different dialects and tribes of people are there who are all believing in the same deity and ascribing to the sad part. They are adding in, as time goes on, the names of their deities. As it goes down the line, and you start off in one place with the YHWH. Later on, it's Elohim. Later on, another name, El Shaddai, pops up. And another, another name, Elum, El Roy, Adonai. And they're telling you, in translation, all of these are the same gods with different attributes. And yet, when you understand the language you read it, you see they operate totally different and in different places. It's like saying that Jesus and Jesus and Zeus and all of them are the same. And most of the Romans, Zeus is the, old, the, the son of the Almighty God. And in the uh, Latin version of Jesus, Jesus becomes the son of Dios. And it keeps on going around. And so if you are not a linguist, which is what most of the scholars of the Torah work before the New Testament came, because in the New Testament, none of those guys really can be able really understand the ancient Hebrew language, or the ancient, I should say, the ancient Ugaric language, that's the real language. They couldn't understand it, so they were all transcribing in their own dialects and lost sight of what was being said and who they were talking about, left in the hands of a group of men that supported the guy called Paul, who himself hated Jesus. In fact, wanted to be him. So it's very difficult to trace names like the figure name I'm saying. And the whole show of, you know, far nun. To get stuck at that nun and say, well, which tribe was he from? And what dialect did he speak? And what province or village did he speak? You follow what I'm saying? But if you look, if you look at um, Judas, we talked about Judas because the family just came out. A lot of people didn't know that Judas... Iscari really means Judas what? It's a car. One of the tribes of Israel. Judas is what well, that meant Judas is a car. But by the time it went to Greek and Latin, they're going Iscari. And you'll never be able to associate the two. Once you do that, you say, well, the Judas was from Ishakar, and that was one of the tribes of the Judah, but deserted the tribe of Judah, and went and lived in the land of Canaan. And then they showed you the Bible that I called Simon, the Canaanite, who told you one of the disciples that Judas brought over to the, to the discipleship. Then he said, well, Judas is hanging out with the Canaanite. He's called Simon, who's from the land of Canaan. And Judas is from the town of Ishakar. And Ishakar lived in the land of Canaan. Then the story started to tumble into place. But you have to A, understand the Hebrew language. And most ministers and preachers today don't. Understand, have it, have, understand the geography of the Middle East and the, how tribes moved about, how families were set up, the rituals, the customs, the tradition, so that when you start today speaking about the coming of Yeshua, who they are uh, calling Jesus, and preparing yourself for his arrival, you'll understand what, what, what we must do. What many people don't know while sitting probably in this room, what today is. I mean, of course, I'm not, I'm not telling you, I don't mean what today is. Of course, I mean something different than what today is. You know what today is? Let me start there. Friday what? Friday what? Four of what? You know what's happening in the sky right now? You know why they have it clouded now? Yes. 
So you can't observe the second formation of stars. Not the first, but the first was May 5th, 2000, last year. And the formation of stars, you can go on the internet <coughs> and we're show you the formation of the stars that came and appeared on May 5th, 2000 on your computer. You know what you're going to bring up? Morgan Davies. Mm. It formed the six-pointed star. Mm. The star of flesh. Mm. Remember why I say the star of flesh? Because the city in which Judah was born, which is called Jesus, was called Bethlehem. Or Bethlehem in Hebrew. City or house of flesh. You got that? And the wise men, the Magus, monitored the alignment of the stars back then to know exactly where and when this flesh see and what house this flesh would be but well, they knew through the writing of all the scriptures that the deity was going to send his ruach soul spirit into flesh on earth somewhere they knew that was going to happen they had to know exactly what house that flesh would be we call that flesh Jesus Christ in English and they monitored the stars. And they all they did is came across the world and went to the place where he was two years old, not an infant. That's a myth. Read the Bible close and see that's a myth. The shepherd saw him as an infant. The Magi saw him at two years old, the father, the only young child. Saw him, presented the ritual, gave him homage, and went back to spread the rumor that, yes, the house of flesh, the, the child was made flesh. Thus you have in the best records kept by all those who claim to be Jesus' disciples, which was Yahanan or John, Bar Zebedee, son of Zebedee, Jesus is beat up. You have in his records, and the word became flesh and grown well among us. And when we go to Matthew chapter 2, and we want to read about the birth, we find out that Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, of the tribe of Judah, of the house of Israel, the lion of Judah. In the, what they call the house of Nehemiah, flesh. Why am I saying that? Because Jesus said, in the same manner in which I live, I shall return. return. That's right. He said, when the world is like Noah's time. Matthew 24. When people are marrying and divorcing and having fun and carefree, that's just one side he mentions. Hmm. In Matthew 24, he mentions something else. Wars. Numerous mm-hmm. wars. wars. Pestilence. Earthquakes in, in diverse, diverse places. places. When men walk the earth, who will say out their mouth that he is Jesus. Don't trust them. Not when men walk the earth and say that they are Jesus. That's not what it says in the beginning. Only the middle does. They only pick that up. But in the beginning it says, many men shall receive you. And say, that, and say that I am Jesus. But you are not. That's why... Because Jesus knew in his own time, around his own disciples, he knew that he was kept by FBI. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In IRS. By an evil militia called uh, Zilts. Fanatics. FBI Paul. IRS. Jews. IRS was a person trying to keep a record of Jesus' spending to see whether he's violating the laws of Rome. That's why he presented him with coin. And that's why when the woman washed his feet, the concern that Judas was projecting was the expense of the oil. And why, and why are we spending this much money on your feet? And who was he talking to? He was talking to the matter. 
Matthew, because Matthew was Jesus' accountant. It was a whole government set up back then. And they had the same pattern today for Jesus' is coming in. They are infiltrating the churches. Jesus said, I know the blasphemy of them who call themselves Jews. Jews. Jesus said, you Jews, <coughs> in St. John's 10, you Jews are of your father, the devil. That's right. Right? That's right. And he was talking to people because they came to him and said, we want to kill you, we want to stone you because you call yourself the son of God. Hmm. That's why we want to stone you, not for good work, but because you call yourself the son of God. Remember and then in the book, Psalm 86, didn't it say, Ye are gods, and all of your children are the Most High? Well, did I ever deny the Most High? Have I ever betrayed myself as the Most High? He's trying to reach these idiots. He didn't, didn't he say, I am the way, the truth, and the life? No one gets to the Father but by me. So am I not just a shepherd leading the flock to the Father? But see, because the plan was to eliminate Jesus. And of course, we discussed, we discussed last night, John the Baptist first. Because he, if you read the books of Mark, chapter 1, you find that John the Baptist managed to baptize all of the blacks. That was in Judea. They said all. All of the Judeans. Whenever they point out Judeans, they're doing it on a race. Because Israelites are a whole tribe of twelve. And they had mixed their seed in with all different tribes. But Judah, every time they mixed their seed, God would kill the mixed child and make that person, like in the case of Judah himself, remarry. So that the seed was pure would stay pure black. Or pure Negro. So John the Baptist, who did not live in the city, but chose to live out in the wilderness. Follow that? He lived the lifestyle of the great prophet Elias or Elijah. And they knew that Elijah put the whole city of Babylon to test when he said, Call your God and I'll call mine. Let's find out who has an answer. Right. You know that? Right. So they knew when John the Baptist had succeeded in converting everybody. And look at those who this. John the Baptist succeeded in preparing. All the tribes of Judah that was in Jerusalem for the coming of Jesus. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. What do they mean by that? They believed that they had to bind their spirit to the Messiah and become heirs to heaven by, as the children of God. That's what the house of Ben Israel believed back then. When the Messiah comes, they could, he was able to marry them back into the family of God. That's what I say, like some heirs to the kingdom of God. Needless to say, the Edomites and the Romans were petrified of this. They were as petrified of that, of that then as they was when Dr. Martin Luther King had millions of people meet in Washington, D.C. So you may not feel it, but the Caucasians are scared to death. After you have subjected a group of people to the type of oppression and abuse that they have, to you, and they see millions of you gather, they have something to worry about. And millions of you gather with one mind, with one accord, they have something else to worry about. And if millions of you gather with one mind and one accord, and without fear of anything but God, they have something else to worry about. And if one of y'all come together with one mind, one accord, fear of God, and no fear of death, because you have overcome the fear of death, they have something even worse to worry about. You hear me? And when we start the sex that happened amongst our people, they start eliminating the leaders. When it started happening in 19, the 60s, some of y'all are too young, we had Malcolm X preaching revolution, Clarence 13X preaching that we are gods, 
Dr. Martin Luther King, preacher, we need peace. Kenyatta, my God, was long past this. Kenyatta, preaching that we need to go back to Africa with the African pioneer movement. Beneath them, the Black Panthers rose up. Around the same time, the nation of Islam, the food of Islam was becoming strong. And they started seeing a commonness in it. And the commonness was white man devil. <laughs> you understand? And then when Dr. Martin Luther King met with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, they had to kill him. Because the nation of Islam at that time, which was at its peak, was united with the Christian front. With a common enemy that was just about voting anybody in or out of office. Which right. is the kind of revolution they failed. So they started wiping them out because of their alignment. And then it, because they have this day called the day that they dread. The great dreadful day of the Lord. That means when the Lord will return. And they watch the stars to find that out. Right? They know there's three alignments that must take place. Three separate star alignments which can figure it something which has not to be shared with anybody that lets them know exactly where the Messiah is on earth. And we hit the second one today. The first one was last year. All that rain, all that hail, all the earthquakes, all that abstract weather is a sign of the alignments. They'll tell you about it on the internet a couple of weeks from now because most of our people will not be conscious of how important the day is. You hear me? Now they fear the last alignment. Because at the last alignment, they'll see the star. The Surya Star Constellation aligned crisscross with Venus. Jupiter is aligned with Mars. And when that happens, they know that the flesh of God is on earth. And when God's flesh comes to earth, he came like before. And he said, I come for the Lord's sheep of the house of Israel only. Only, best in his language, only. I did not come, he says, but to the Lord's sheep of the house of Israel. He said, I come to my own, and the last time his own what? Receiving them Because Judas was one of them. That's right. Judas was one of them working for the Roman government, but a Negro. In the story, said. And was there to find fault in Jesus. So he could report to the high priests and the Romans so they can justify arresting him and imprisoning him. But that wasn't all. Peter had an infiltrator, I'm sorry, Paul, who was a Roman, had an infiltrator, a Pharisee and a Roman, had an infiltrator also in the group. Got a whole book in the Bible. His name is Peter. And Peter was a part of the conspiracy to set Jesus up. Oh, yeah. If you read the book, you'll find that Peter's the only one that mentions sell your sandals and buy swords. Right? What? Peter said that. Sell your sandals and buy swords. Then, when they get in the garden on the night they come to take Jesus, who cuts off the high priest serving mouth is there? Peter. Peter. Now, if Peter says that this is a gospel of Jesus, I'm writing, for Jesus, and in that gospel, he says that Jesus said, sell your sandals and get swords. Now he has placed Jesus in a position where he becomes a revolutionist by a weapon. Yeah? And when they get in the garden that night, Peter knows that he's going to betray Jesus and cut him. See, he didn't cut a high priest. He cut a high priest and served him. Why did he go for the high priest, the first person that touched him? Why did he go for Judah, who had just been Judas, who had just betrayed Jesus with a kid? Why did he cut his head off? Because he went towards someone of lesser value to anybody but its proper owner. You see? So if I cut off 
Your servant's ears are high priest. You're upset. But Jesus fooled them. Jesus bent down. He put the ear back on. He said, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Did I tell you this was my hour? That's right. Are you just going to walk in with someone? What are you talking about? <laughs> Jesus, Jesus knew that then the people wasn't with him. So when they lay hands on Jesus, and they take Jesus into custody. Are you walking with me? Yes, we are. They take Jesus into custody for night court. Very similar, <laughs> Very similar to today. They took him straight into night court. But it wasn't a Jewish court. It was a Roman court because a dentist mill was at the door as a title. And Jews wouldn't have a woman at the door as a title. Read the Bible and get the quotes. You'll see it. A woman's at the door, but they say John was known by the high priest. All the other disciples deserted Jesus except John and Peter. Right? That's right. And they followed the procession to night court. John, because he was Jesus' beloved and had no fear of death, he went right in the courthouse and was sitting in the courthouse. I don't know any of y'all throw the quotes on the board for them so they can look at my way to your home. All right. If I start to stop reading every quote, we'll be lost. But you'll see it when we uh, All right? But here, he stayed outside the courthouse like the people out there and peeked in. And the woman there said, do you know that man? Mm-hmm. Talking about Jesus in night court. And said no. While they were there... <laughs> Judas comes back. Judas is who now? For the court. Judas is the key witness for the court. They need him to testify how Jesus flung his money, how Jesus went against the Lord, the Romans, the birds that he did, he witnessed. But Jesus, how Judas had a change of heart. Jesus, Judas repented. Went back to the priest, and Peter and John saw him. He had to come back to the same priest. In the same court. And where was Jesus? In custody in the court. You gotta read the Bible closely to see that. Where was Paul? Paul was one of the people that was there at night. Take on that special person. That certain man. Or that certain man. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's you, that certain man, that was Paul who controlled Peter. This may sound very unimportant right now. So if you understand what I'm saying, you're going to see it as time tumbles for the same time with it. It'll make more sense to you as the tribe of Judah who has been lost. You know how to prepare yourself for what's going to happen. You don't know the story correctly, you get messed up. So, John's on the inside, Peter looks in, the woman at the title of the door questions Peter. He denies Jesus how many times? <laughs> Wait, ready? You swear to tell the whole truth? One. And nothing but the truth. Two. So help you die. Three. Those are three denials of Christ. Because the first statement, do you swear, is in violation of the scripture's crimes. In, in the courthouse, when they make you swear, they're making you go against the scriptures. Okay? So Peter said, I don't even know him. Jesus didn't even do that. But Jesus, by then, knew that Peter was an agent of Paul, a GBI of being there by, by an FBI. A subsidiary. Oh, the thing is, people, Judas was one of them working for the Roman government, but in Israel. In the story, And was there to find Paul in Jesus. So he could report it to the high priest and the Romans. So they can justify arresting him and imprisoning him. But that wasn't all. Peter had an infiltrator, I'm sorry, Paul, who was a Roman, had an infiltrator, a Pharisee and a Roman, had an infiltrator also in the group. Got a whole book in the Bible. His name is Peter. And Peter was a part of the conspiracy to set Jesus up. Oh, yeah. If you read the book, You'll find that Peter is the only one that mentions sell your sandals and buy swords. Right? That's right. Peter said that. 
sell your sandals and buy swords. Then, when they get in the garden on the night they come to take Jesus, who cuts off the high priest serving Malchus is in? Peter. Now, if Peter says that this is a gospel of Jesus I'm writing, for Jesus, and in that gospel he says that Jesus said, sell your sandals and get swords. Now he has placed Jesus in a position where he becomes a revolution this by weapon. Yeah. And when they get in the garden that night, Peter knows that he's going to betray Jesus and cut him. See, he didn't cut a high priest. He cut a high priest and serves him. Why did he go for the high priest, the first person that touched him? Why did he go for Judah, who had just been Judas, who had just betrayed Jesus with a kid? Why did he cut his head off? Because he went towards someone of lesser value to anybody but its proper owner. You see, so if I cut off your servants in your high priest, you're upset. But Jesus fooled them. Jesus bent down. He did that for more. He said, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> did I tell you this was my hour? That's right. I just stood and woke you with what I'm talking about. Jesus, Jesus knew that then that Peter wasn't with him. So when they lay hands on Jesus, and they take Jesus into custody, are you walking with me? Yes, we are. They take Jesus into custody for night court. Very Watch it. Very similar to today, they put them straight in the night court. But it wasn't a Jewish court, it was a Roman court because a den's mill was at the door as a title. And Jews couldn't have a woman at the door as a title. Read the Bible, you get the quotes. You'll see it. A woman's at the door, but they say John was known by the high priest. All the other disciples deserted Jesus except John and Peter. Right? That's right. And they followed the procession to night court. John, because he was Jesus' beloved and had no fear of death, he went right in the courthouse and was sitting in the courthouse. I don't want any of you throw the quotes on the board for them so they can go away from home. If I start stopping reading every quote, we'll move on. But you'll see it when we All right? But here, he stayed outside the courthouse like the people out there and peeped in. And the woman there said, Do you know that man? Mm-hmm. Talking about Jesus in night court. And he said, No. While they were there, Judas comes back. Judas is who now? For the court. Judas is the key witness for the court. They need him to testify how Jesus squandered money, how Jesus went against the Lord, the Romans, the person he did, he witnessed. But Jesus, how Judas had a change of heart. Jesus, Judas repented. Went back to the priest, and Peter and John saw him. He had to come back to the same priest in the same court. And where was Jesus? In custody in the court. You gotta read the Bible you to see that. Where was Paul? Paul was one of the people that was there at night. Take on that special person. That certain man. Or that certain man. There he go. <laughs> She's shot. That certain man, that was Paul who controlled Peter. This may sound very unimportant right now. But if you understand what I'm saying, you're going to see it as time comes because it's being time with it. It'll make more sense to you as the tribe of Judah was the lost. You know how to prepare yourself for what's going to happen. You don't know the story correctly, you can't mess up. So, John's on the inside, Peter looks in, the woman at the title of the door questions Peter. He denies Jesus how many times? <laughs> when? Ready? You swear to tell the whole truth? One. And nothing but the truth? Two. So help you God. Three. Those are three denials of Christ. Because the first statement do you swear is in violation of the scripture's rights. In, in the courthouse, when they make you swear, they're making you go against the scriptures. Okay? So Peter said, I don't even know him. Jesus didn't even do that. 
when Jesus by then knew that Peter was an agent for Paul, a GBI of being there by a jet, by an FBI. Subsidiary. Oh, because it gets deeper. They saw Judas. John gets up and tells Peter, come in here. Peter comes into the court. John leaves out, hooks up with Joseph of Arimathea, which was Mary's uncle, and Nicodemus. Judas stole the coins down, runs out, runs to John. How do I say that? I can tell you what I say. Because the whole story of Judas is hanging himself can only be found one place in the Bible, in the book of John. And if Judas was by himself and went out and hung himself, how did he get the coin if nobody was there? And he was all alone, threw the coin down, and when he retreated by himself to a tree and hung himself, who saw it? <coughs> no. Nicodemus, Joseph of Arimathea, and John hung Judas. But Joe, Judas' best friend, called Simon, who was a Canaanite, was a zealot. These people are called full of zeal with the strictness of the law. They're like mercenaries, fanatics. You know some of you got way in front of this. Look at this. A brother, they will arrest the brother on some crap. Say, come on, brother. Wait, you violate the law. I not like I killed nobody. You know what I mean? I'm just so up here and on the side. But it's me because I'm crying. I don't, I don't give you a ticket anyway. You know, you go, you run in the park, you car, you come out, say, I just have to get something. First, I had to get something for my baby. And I go, well, I'm not. 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 i but Judas also being the tribe of Judah, he was sponsored by what's referred to as the Sanhedrin. You hear me? The Sanhedrin are the ones that hired him to do his job. The Pharisees are the ones that have Paul doing their job. The Pharisees got their whole doctrine from Babylon captivity. Totally different than the true teachings. Changed everything around. Even put Tammuz and all these different Sumerian gods in the Jewish calendar. Kept the traditions different. Jesus came to try to set that straight. The exaggerations of the law and different things. So the Sanhedrin found out that Judas went off with John, uh, Nicodemus, and Joseph of Arabia, and went to find him. When they found him, he was what? He was hanging from a tree. Hung. They were so mad at Judas because Judas was their what? He was their key witness against Jesus. They needed him in court to testify against Jesus. Courts went. They had court system, night court, then Jesus went to morning court, and then he went to the judgment court where there was a jury. That's right in the Bible, you study you see the system for the good. But Judas was dead when they found out they got so vexed at Judas, they took Judas down off the tree and threw his body over a cliff and busted the sun so no one would know he was hung. Then he tried to hide Judas to say, that Jesus' followers killed him. Now, John the Baptist was already imprisoned for killing Jesus. Did you know that? Did you? Right in the Bible. Let's read it. Go to the Bible. We don't put that section there. Sharp ring. <laughs> we just read it five minutes ago. Yes, yeah, in Luke. You're going to find that while John the Baptist is baptizing Jesus, Jesus had just come to that village. John the Baptist lived out in the wilderness and had thousands of black followers that hung out with him and was in the trade. But a weird thing happened to be about the cross. Weird thing. When Jesus was on the cross and gave up the ghost, his body stayed on the cross. Is that right? And his spirit returned to heaven. 
the Holy Spirit took him up. Is that right? Right. You'll find also when John the Baptist baptizes Jesus in the Jordan, it says that Jesus' spirit went straight way up out of the water and met the Holy Spirit that took it. Now, come on, get this in your mind. But you don't get lost by these water translations. There will be an hour later before they water them down with confusion. That the Spirit, Jesus ascended upward at the baptism. John has him under the water. His Spirit leaves the water. Everyone sees it. Remember that? And takes him into the wilderness for 40 days. All right? So now, you find it? Okay, let's read it. Mark 1.9, he said. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. Hear that? He wasn't from that city. He came there. And straightway coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens open and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. And immediately, the, Here you go. the spirit... Listen, no, no rush. Did you get that picture so far? Mm -hmm. After Jordan, he's under the water. Right? Mm -hmm. The spirit lifts up while he's under the water. And I'll explain that if you need that. Hold, just stay with me one minute. I'll explain the water baptism for you. In ancient times, it was believed that you were born of sin. So when, when a child came through the water of a mother into this world of earth, there was a sinner that had to learn to repent by the law. You understand that? When the water broke, the child came into this world. A sinner. That was the old teaching. Born of sin. So the new teaching was that, I, that he said to Nicodemus, who met him by night, lest ye are born again. You shall know why I see the kingdom of heaven. The demon said, Do I have to go back into my mother's womb? And he says, I'm born of spirit. And true. So they set up a system where a person who's out of the womb and living from the day they were born to this point, a sinner, could be merged back under water. And when the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is commanded, they can be lifted. From the water, what? A new person. Now born again was without sin. You understand? That's where that ritual comes from. To be born. That's what the whole baptism concept was. That you could be dipped under water again, like in a mother's womb, but this time you come back into the world because you confess your belief in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Then automatically you're born and clean. Like, with me? So now, when John the Baptist had Jesus under the water, and he was making a proclamation of Ben Israel, which is Shema Israel, they didn't say in the name of Jesus Christ back then, because he wanted to be following Jesus Christ. They were using what's called Deuteronomy chapter 6. The commandment of the of the Lord thy God with all thy strength and all thy power and all thy might. And when he lifts them from a mitzvah, which is the Hebrew word for baptism, Jesus' spirit had to what? Before he came from, it, up from beneath the water, the crowds of masses are watching, followers and enemies. And what, he, what happens? And the spirit like a dove descending upon him. Okay. And immediately the spirit driveth him into the wilderness. The spirit immediately, immediately it makes it clear, takes the spirit of Jesus into the wilderness. You understand? Right. And he stayed there. Go ahead. And he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted of Satan. All right? So now Jesus is out of the way. And now they have to explain, to John the Baptist has to explain, where is that man you dipped under that water? <laughs> Sounds weird. Because the preacher don't see this part of the story because he ain't read the whole book. You can't read the language. You only got little pieces that they canonize for you. You don't get the whole story in English. The question now is John the Baptist, 
Where is the man that everybody saw you dip underwater? That new revolutionist that just came to town that my father was trying to kill. That's another part you forget. That the people that arrest, arrested John the Baptist was a Herod. That's right. He was the son of the father who wanted to kill Jesus when he was born. And he said that the king of Israel was born. And John had just united all the blacks. And they knew that John made a statement where he said, One coming after me, who is preferred, Before me. that this great man is getting ready to bow down and tie the laces of someone else. Who is this? So the Romans are on edge now. And they say, Behold the Lamb of God. When they said, Behold the Lamb of God, now the Jews, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the Romans, everybody's upset. Because they consider that blasphemy. Where is this man? So we may lay hands on him and kill him. That's the same thing that uh, Herod said to the wise men. Where is he? Tell us where he is that we may go there and worship him. Right. <laughs> That's what they'll tell you. Tell us where he's at so we can find him and worship him. We want to join your organization. <laughs> Where's Brother Kai there? You know, we want to be <laughs> That's what they did. But now, Jesus is gone for 40 days. What's the next thing said? Why not, why not the Spirit takes him to the wilderness? And he's there for 40 days. What does it say? Man, what? Now, after that, verse 14. John. Now, after that, immediately, Jesus is gone. Now, after the immediately, what happens? John was put in prison. Bam. See, it's in the Bible that you don't see. Putting the words together, immediately Jesus is in the water, taken away out of sight, and then John is taken to jail. So now, they never tell you in the Bible why John got arrested and for what reason. They tell you about the incidents in jail, but here was the question. The question was, John, are you the Messiah? They said, no. Are you that expected prophet, Elijah? He said, no. Right? He said, are you Elijah? No. He said, okay. Jesus later told him he wasn't the return of Elijah. Because Elijah was first coming for his great and gentle day of the Lord. John the Baptist was so, he said, no. He thought that Jesus was the whole thing. But God had also planned an immaculate conception through Elizabeth for John. Because Zachariah and Elizabeth was past childbearing also when the angel came to her and she was found with child of the Holy Ghost also. So John was important that the spirit of Elijah could transport a second portion of himself that is said he was king into John the Baptist that he should herald in the ruler of Israel, the Lion of Judah. You follow? So John the Baptist was arrested for killing Jews, for killing Jesus. Because they couldn't find Jesus. See, how this, this is a, 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 a standard conspiracy. When you read it, the Bible word for word, look at it closely and see what it's saying. You follow it in the statements and stop trying to look for the highlights to make it feel good. <laughs> because that's no, because that's for Gentiles. They're supposed to read our scriptures and they're supposed to get stimulated by it and thus rejuvenate it and get a soul. You understand? Their soul is people. They lost their soul in the book of Joshua 5 where the Spirit left them into Jordan when they saw the Amorites when they saw us cross the walk across water. And so this spirit, this soul gets left. This is the very day why folks think I'm so anyway. It happens to be a real saint. So they get this surge of, of uh, glory at the gospel. But that's not what you get. You get the law that God commanded them. The law came, uh, St. John chapter 1, verse 17. The law came to Moses, telling the Israelites. The law came to Moses, Israel, but grace, which is forgiveness and truth, the truth comes to Jesus. Why they say truth comes to Jesus? Jesus didn't have a doctrine. Now you know Jesus didn't have a doctrine? Because Jesus said what? What's God? 
no right till shall be removed from the door until all is fulfilled. So he didn't have a doctrine. So what they mean by truth, they call Jesus the spirit of the truth. What he represented, the things he said, what's the most important thing he said? Uh, as many as believe in me, even if they don't see me, to them I give the power to become the children of God. And why is that important? Because as children of God, in Revelation chapter 21, that we are dressed, we are dressed in a new body, an incorruptible body. We are dressed and prepared for the wedding. Because we are God's chosen and through Christ have been made heirs to the kingdom. We're just waiting for the day that we are ready in a new incorruptible body waiting for the marriage of the Lamb. And it says in that Revelation chapter 21, God says, I will be here. You will be my people and I will be your God. He didn't say, I'll be everybody's God. Hold on. Listen to it. He said, what? You hear me? He didn't say, I'll be everybody's God. Go back and read Revelation 21. Let's see. First thing you go ahead, Spirit. Go ahead, Spirit. Go ahead, Spirit. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with man. Hey. And he will dwell with them. Huh. And they shall be his people. Huh. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And then tells you the 12 disciples in there. <laughs> People say, how could the 12 disciples be in there if Judas betrayed the Lord Jesus Christ? Because Judas repented. And any sinner, regardless of how great a sin it may be, if you stop and do the prayer of repentance, God will forgive you. Gag what people say. Don't let anybody tell you you can't be saved because you killed too many people. You can't be saved because you stole too much stuff. You can't be saved because you used too much drugs. Don't let anybody tell you that. Judas got saved. Judas, who betrayed Jesus, is in heaven. Now you read your Bible, you see right there, he went back that day with the coins and it says, he repented. Say it again. Matthew 27. Matthew 27. Go ahead. Then Judas, then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself. When he saw that he was condemned for betraying Jesus, he what? Repented himself. He repented. And what is the whole baptism for? For the remission of sin. So when he made that statement, that he realized he had did the wrong thing by betraying Jesus, he was clean. Right. Say that everybody in this room can be clean. All right. Say to the person next to you, you can be clean. <laughs> <laughs> so, there ain't nothing, there ain't nothing that you've ever done on this son that God will not give you for. That has brought to hell. Spirit of 
of God. I got on my armor now. I got a purpose. I found out something, y'all. I found out I'm God's child. I'm not just in God's congregation. I'm just not one of the people in the nation. I'm not one of the things that ever looted from my homo erectus. No. 
Shakar, you can find it on the tablets if you take the time to do some research and look up the word Shakar, you'll find it with a being called Shakar, who's the father of Lucifer, whose name is not even Lucifer, his name is Samael. Bad thing about it, if you didn't, if you wasn't looking at the Bible amendments, you wouldn't even see the word Lucifer. They say, well, that means torchbearers, and that's why Freemasons are Satan, Satanists, but they mean the, the, the light. Well, actually, the word is not there, Lucifer. In Hebrew, what language the word is Hilalium. Hilalium is there. And it has to do with the crescent moon. <coughs> If I look and being the Jews and all of them and Christians all follow the soul and the count of all y'all worshiping Lucifer. Yeah. <laughs> because actually, actually you are going to church on Sunday. <laughs> and that ain't Sunday, so ain't the AY day. You pretend it's Sunday, but you're really going on Sunday. So you ain't worshiping the sun, you worshiping the sun. <laughs> and if I tell you that, you call me something crazy. But Jesus said they're going to do that when you're talking the truth. They're going to attack you for the truth. They don't know what day and time we in. They're there and wait here. So we got to carry this word out. But so we got to wake up, you lost sheep of the house of Israel, the tribe of Judah. We got to get that, that ignorance from the front of you. We got to get you out of the church and put you back in the synagogue. Because Jesus said they're going to drive you out of your synagogue. We got to get you back in the law. Because when we're in the law and under the law, we're under the protection of God. Because God laid down the law. You remove the law, you remove God's protection. I'm going to tell you women, men don't want you keeping the law. Ain't nothing more aggravating than a religious wife. <laughs> well, there ain't going to be no coffee shops in the box. From the baby chapter 11, verse 7, it says, Children of Israel, don't touch it. Don't go near it. Don't approach it. Be it. God made the law. You might not like this out, and you might have to like all of them. Right? I like being drunk too. It just ain't healthy. <laughs> it just ain't healthy. God tells us in the 31st Proverbs, do not get drunk. He right. doesn't say don't drink. He says do not drink strong drink. Don't drink whiskey. You're allowed to drink wine, but kosher wine for Shabbat. The day when the Sabbath is broken. But if anyone will be drunk, you say, I'm not going to be drunk. Oh, my God. Hey, I ain't going to let you. I did it. already in us. You're pouring spirit on top of spirit and you get intoxicated. Now I'm going to say something you all know is true and any racist is that's true. A white man will drink circles around me and you. <laughs> they can guzzle down alcohol beer 30, 40 cans a day and you be laying on your back. <laughs> Because when it ferments, they call it what? Ether. So they got three more ethers less than you. But they had sent to you seven, eight, and nine. And the highest number is what? You got all the ether in you that you need. <laughs> you and I don't have to smoke or drink to get high. travel all over the world and speak the languages. They can't do nothing. Most Muslims don't have a clue what the Quran says. They don't have a clue. They're not reading it in the right language. The teachers can't speak the language. All these imams walk around with perfume on and beard and stuff. Don't know me. They should come marching over the bush of Galilee. I said, before we get into any conversations, 
boy a number. In case he don't have it, you got it. Get out four or five numbers in one night. That's the holiday that's riding the beast. Because we have been seduced by the devil into living in the image of the beast. And you study the history of the Canaanites, you find out the Canaanites are the Sodomites. And the Glorites. And their mothers and fathers are the degradation in the world. And you and me have got addicted to it. The same way you can get addicted to drugs, you're addicted to sex. Yeah. Let me tell you your problem. You with me, y'all? Yeah. Let me tell you one of your problems. Black women in America have been told that they are ugly. Yeah. They didn't have to be verbally said you're ugly. Right. The media did it. Right. You understand? Yeah. The media removed the approval of your man from you by putting women out there with an image that they wanted to portray as ugly. Right. I'm sorry, as beautiful. Right. And thus leave you ugly. Right. You went to Nigeria, people in Nigeria look ugly to people in America. Or oh, they say, oh, we're over in London. And Holly Larry, they put that inside us. That's love the image of the beast. They gave the image of the beast life. I explained that before. When they took a picture, Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, and drew the first picture of Jesus and God as a white man. Reaching down and touching like this, you know that picture. When they reach down like this, and God will be touching Jesus, and they're laying down and looking like that. <laughs> they put that in your mind. Oh, they, they do that. And they remove the beauty from that women. So you don't feel beautiful. You know what you gotta do now? You gotta go out to get the approval of men. You know how you get it? By touching the hands. Because you got a big butt. So you know somebody said, hey, that's a good yeah. <laughs> If you got pretty lips, thank you. <laughs> you don't get fake lips, you get fake your lips, you shout your lips, you lie on your lips like she was doing. Part of the vampire's image was a pagan 
pasty complexion. Yes, sir. I ain't never seen a nigga in a pasty complexion. <laughs> Maybe one or two Asians along the way having a light nigga. It's true. But he had removed your beauty. And you began to accept it. And then try to transform your 15 to a 6. You know what I'm talking about. Black women are healthy. Black women are hip. That is our women. And even when you see them women in the Egypt this afternoon, they got fives here. Honey. <laughs> they got big old fives, little calves, no not needed, no pouch. That's our women. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
way that's getting y'all know me. We are in our time. The computers are revealing who you are. No doubt about it no more. It's DNA. They can stick a swab in this little girl's mouth and put it in a machine now and come up and say, you're from the tribe of Judah. <laughs> and the white man in Israel is going out his mind at these findings. They had a program on the real E. <laughs> they started off with a sister. They didn't color it up. And she's like that. Yeah. <laughs> they look just like that. That's what they said. Somewhere along the line, we tricked you 
and we became the God. God became me and I'm all the sheep. Well, every God I know was born to a woman, including our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. True. Something along the line, something along the line in the mix, Mary got pushed out the way. You don't even hear about the blessed mother Mary no more. All you hear about is Jesus and John and James and every now and then one Mary will come in and walk Jesus down and she's out of the picture. <laughs> That's not how it was.